Hi, I'm Harlan Makemson. I'm an associate professor in the School of Communications at Elon, and we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, using what's called web curation that can be used to enhance what you do in the classroom and out of it. Web curation is a hot topic right now in my profession, or my ex-profession, journalism, um, as, as a way people are gathering information, sorting information, and, and making sense of it on the web. But I'm going to show you a few ways today you can also use it in the classroom to get students interested in topics, uh, and in some cases even do research on topics, uh, and in one extreme example sometimes can lead them toward jobs. So uh, first I'm going to talk a little bit about what web curation is, one definition for from um, the Open Dictionary, what web curation does. It gets at what this is about and how it's different from blogging, which I know a lot of us have used blogs in the past. I used it with a course abroad uh, in January term, uh, sort of more of a, um, a, a way of doing a journaling about a class or about a topic. Uh, this is slightly different. Uh, content curation has to do with taking all the stuff that's on the web right now and trying to make sense of it, uh, trying to find a way way to uh, make it where, where people can, can understand it better, where they can sort through all the stuff you have to go through now uh, on the web. Generally, this is around a specific topic, so obviously a course would be a topic, or you can uh, drill down and do it by topics within a course. Uh, the big difference with content curation is um, it's not, strictly speaking, aggregation. You're not just gathering stuff together. Uh, it's not um, automated where it's, you know, fed to you automatically based on keywords. The difference is there's a human being there. They're the ones making the decisions, what's relevant, what's important, uh, what do you need to know about this particular topic. And as I mentioned at the, at the open, this has become a, a really growing area on the web, um, both for journalism and for marketing and for people just trying to figure out what is relevant in that sea of information. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how, um, if you're not familiar with it, some things you can go look at online to sort of get a sense of what content curation is about professionally. And then we're gonna talk a little more about how you do, might wanna do this in the classroom. Uh, first, why, why is content curation Right? I've mentioned the sea of information that's on the internet right now. Well, it's just going to get worse, folks. Um, some experts who follow this uh, say it's not going to be too long until um, every long holiday weekend, um, every three days, uh, the content on the web will double. So if you can imagine how difficult it is now to keep track of what all is going on on the web, imagine what it's going to be like in the future. Um, so again, this is an area where having people do the sorting, having you t tell you uh, at least here's some things you at least might want to take a look at is becoming increasingly important. Uh, some of you may have read uh, The Filter Bubble by Eli Pariser. I, I signed it for a graduate course this year. Uh, in it, he sort of points out that not all search is created equal anymore either, where um, you used to think you go to Google and we all get the same result. Well, no, it's personalized now. So my search for Google on a topic and your search on Google for a topic may be completely different depending on what we've looked for on Google for. So um, we can't just necessarily say, well, go to Google and find the answer because, because of the personalization issue, um, we're now not even getting the same search results. So again, another reason why having a human being sort through things in a topic, um, code them, categorize them, give context and background is increasingly important um, in general on the World Wide Web and for information. A couple of examples on the web that you, if you're not familiar with this, and you may have seen curation and not known it, um, but here are a couple that I like to point students toward. Um, Jim Romanesco does a curation about, he calls it a blog, which really a curation. He finds relevant information about the news media and the news media business. Uh, as you can see, a, a post from today uh, was based upon, or at least the, 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 uh, the genesis of it was a tweet sent out um, about uh, <laughs> Mitt Romney was giving a speech at the museum and then in a bit of irony the reporters uh, were kicked out of a museum that's about the news. Um, so he, he, he finds information about the news business and about the First Amendment and then annotates it and gives context to it. Um, a lot of things that curation can open discussions about. Uh, Romanesco used to do this under the pointer.org umbrella. Pointer is a journalistic organization that does training. Um, he left Pointer because of some controversy about whether he was 
quoting too much from the original sources. Again, curation, you're talking about things other people have written. Um, so this, this has opened up some interesting discussion about what is okay to do on the web. How much can you use of these um, stories that you are curating about? But Romanesco was one of the first to really do this, at least in my field. Another one to look at is the Atlantic Wire. It's the uh, part of the Atlantic Magazine's online presence. And the Atlantic Wire portion is all curation. It's not any of their stuff, but they take things from other organizations um, or news stories going on and um, give links from different places that are writing about it. Um, and this is a subsection of it. What some of you uh, may take the New York Times online or at least read it, realize now you only get 10 clicks a month. Well, The Atlantic is taken to, here's today's topics, and boil them down to a sentence or two. So if you want to spend one of your 10 links on the month, it gives you a sense of what might be relevant for you to click on. Again, The Atlantic does much more um, ex extensive curations as well, but just a couple of examples of what I'm talking about here. You're taking other things from the web that you find value in and pointing people to them. So a little bit how, how it's working in the professional realm and on the World Wide Web in general and why it matters.